there's been some very good British super middleweights that have won this belt down the years. Callum Smith, George Groves, James DeGale, and uh, the very underrated James Cook have all held this belt. Can Lerone Richards join that group? Or will Giovanni Di Carolis roll back the years? Rumble. It's scheduled for 12 then. The belt, the belt is vacant. And uh, Richards in the uh, distinctive shorts and the even more distinctive gloves. The Southport working under the stewardship, the stewardship of Dave Coldwell. Interesting point that uh, Chris made there, Alex, that uh, sometimes he's been guilty perhaps of just going through second and third gear because he's got those natural talents. And some people have said to him, you know what, he's a guy that just admires his work a little bit. Well, that's something that Dave Coldwell will knock straight out of him if that's the case. And it'll be interesting to see how much he is really going to sort of take to heart what he's learned and whether he can put De Carolis in his place. Because De Carolis has only been stopped a couple of times, both late. And he's very durable. Yeah, Nick, I think uh, one thing they've been working on, and this is Danny Wilson from, from Boxing Science, who starts the S&C and, and some of the nutrition for Cold World's fighters. He said Lerone is naturally a very, very explosive athlete, very fast twitch. He broke the uh, the speed record on the, the treadmill curve um, a few weeks ago now, just over 20 miles an hour at top whack. But he says he's never trained, he's never trained for explosivity. He's never, never lifted one rep maxes in the gym. They've got him pulling at 210, 220 kilos on the trap bowl for a guy of his weight, and especially with his levers is very very impressive and uh, what that's starting to translate to with the technique work they've been doing turning through his punches and, and of course working on bringing his lactate threshold up which means he can work at a higher intensity for longer is, is that they've taken him in sparring from a guy that was throwing about 20 to 25 punches around which is probably a bit below the super middleweight average to uh, at times going up to 65 to 75 punches around, which is well above the average. So that should, if it translates in a, in a performance tonight, once he's warmed up and, and starts to get going, a much busier, a much harder hitting, uh, and a much more ferocious Lerone Richards. And, and that's really where you put the gears in place. It's one thing telling a fighter to go through the gears, but they have to be able to do it, Alex. Yeah, no, they certainly do it, you know, and it's, it's all fine and well, Chris, doing all that kind of training, but if it's not actually inbuilt in your style, sometimes you just can't carry it out yeah. you know and um, it's great you know th but you really do have to um, you know put theory into practice and this is a place that it should come out you know sometimes you see these guys doing all this great stuff in the gym as well you know and they're looking fantastic in the gym and they're lifting great weight and then you know it just doesn't fit their style it has to be usable strength that you've got in the ring it, the strength that you have in the ring has to work for the way that you best box in my personal opinion I really think that that's that is the bottom line. You know, it's it's the same old thing with trying to make non-punchers punchers yeah. by benching heavy weights, and you know sometimes they just are just not, not punchers. punchers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice and sharp from Richards, and, uh, clumsy and crude from De Carolis. Yeah, that was a really comfortable opening. Three minutes for Lerone Richards. Not the start the veteran would have wanted. Okay. On the counter, punch down this, yeah? On the other commit. You see how that one is going up there? See, when he goes flip up, flip it up, then he's leaving oh, you no. that okay. shot there. Bring my back foot in as well. Okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 you have to, have to earn it first. Ten seconds, Jonas! Save the stuff. You see how you're going to go on the ring stuff? Seconds out! Round four! Round four! Round four! Round four! Round four! Got quite a reputation as a tactical mastermind as Dave Coldwell. And, uh, Lerone Richards was certainly doing the listening there. Coldwell happy with what he saw in the first three minutes. Wasn't a bad little fighter as well. He wasn't bad, was he? He was uh, in the corner of Ryan Rhodes when he fought Canelo Alvarez ten yeah. years ago over in Mexico. Okay. The anniversary of that's uh, next month. Ryan Rhodes is here actually helping out Stefan Bolt. He'll be celebrating backstage with uh, Jason Cunningham too. Yeah, Coldwell's been around a long time, got a good new stable of 
fighters. Jordan Gill, who's, who's been around for a while, is really starting to show his worth. Young Hopi Price as well, as youth Olympic gold medalist, is really, really starting to come on too. They're a really good team, slick, skilled fighters, and he's uh, just starting to see now the, the Coldwell style yeah. after yeah. bedding in. I don't think we saw it really in the first fight with Riches, and you, don't, you often don't, you know, fighters can get stuck in between styles in the first contest under a, a new coach, but it's definitely starting to look more like the kind of thing Coldwell would, would want from the Rome Riches. Good start from him. Yeah. Spent a lot of time around Adam Booth and stuff as well, and David Hay, and you know, he picked up stacks yep. for those guys. We all remember David Hay kind of baiting him out before the belly fight, calling him the t shirt carrying bucket boy, and well, how that came back to bite him in those two contests. Yeah. It's really defining nights for belly. You know, you sometimes forget that. After a fighter retires, everyone talks about the void that they leave. You sometimes forget that the trainer is actually left with a big void as well. The personality like Tony Bellew, but he's starting to rebuild his stable. He's worked hard, he's been selective, had plenty of offers and approaches from fighters, but he only takes who he believes are the very best and have got the real potential to get to world level. Richards, he really thinks he's one of them. And not everybody buys into what Dave Coldwell says as well. It's, uh, there have been some hits and misses, but uh, the guys that stick with him tend to maximise their potential. Through the first two minutes of this one, Richards looks very in control here. Yeah, well, he's definitely controlling the tempo here anyway. He's got, uh, he's got the Carlos on the back of that, the back of that good jab, and able to set up some of his better, better combinations as well. He's, uh, he looks quite comfortable. Turning to Carlos as well. He's very smart and very clever, Carlos. You can uh, see that if you. He's always in good shape as well, Nick, isn't he? Shape, he's always yeah. ripped and he always looks yeah. really physically yeah. like he works really hard in the gym, yeah. He's in top shape. More body fat on a nail. <laughs> and yet, despite that, Richards looks physically much the bigger of the two, doesn't he? Yeah. Just longer limbs, I think, and you know, he's got a little bit of height on him, so. So he got right out of the way there as De Carolis lunged in. Uh, Richards has uh, seen the first two rounds. Yeah. Had a good long, long look at Giovanni De Carolis and probably thinking, well, I'm not seeing too much here. Now, the big, big night for Daniel Dos Santos, a man who talks about how boxing has saved his life, and he means it literally as well he's a man who said by the way my trainer is the man that saved my life because he believed in me before i did a man that uh, has got quite a backstory and it would be quite an emotional night for him if he can surprise everybody and get the win against joshua Boazzi in our main event he comes in as the big underdog we've already seen what happens to underdogs tonight yes sir what are you doing just on your feet exit nice and tight with the head there you go. Ten seconds, okay, so round by round. Seconds out. Round three. Round three then in this battle for the vacant European super middleweight belt. Former WBA champion Giovanni Di Carolis in the uh, predominantly red trunks, getting off to a slow start here against the unbeaten English Southport Lerone Richards. You can just uh, hear Dave Colwell in the, in the corner there, just telling him to keep tight on those exits. And what he means by that is just keep your head nice and close to your opponent. Ironically, the closer you are as you're on the turn, the safer you are. He doesn't want to get caught in kind of no man's land when he's just on that pivot. Something that whistles past, maybe a left hook or even a right hand as Carol De Carolis turns with him. Good start though from Richards. Really sharp. Looks very, very composed. Got a lot of self belief, and that's no bad thing. Any athlete in any sport has got to believe in themselves, and Lerone Richards certainly does. Question for both of you guys, really. He's got just three stoppages in his 14 wins. Does he carry the kind of power that's going to trouble the, the big beasts in this division if he does start to move up through the ranks? Well, you would think that he, uh, having Dave Caldwell, are trying to develop up, you know, a style that, that can cope with that, Nick. You know, maybe he's not so much a natural puncher. He's not showed any signs of being a, a concussive one punch hitter or you know even uh, 
even the kind of guy that wears you down over a period of time. So I think that um, they're trying to use his attributes. They're trying to still develop a style um, that, that can give everyone trouble. And, you know, a good slick southpaw that knows where he's going, that can control the tempo about, that picks some really good, sharp, accurate counter punches. It's one of the biggest problems, like we've seen earlier with, with Cunningham, it's a massive problem for anyone to deal with. Yeah, I, I know. completely agree with you, Alex. I, I think the issue that that may cause, it, it, he's almost at times looked a bit too good for his own good without being particularly fan-friendly in style. And you really have to look at a fighter in the same mould of Demetrius Andre. And, and he really is chasing shadows of fighters who aren't really interested in chasing his shadow in the ring. And, and what Lorraine Richards doesn't want to do is get to that stage at, at world level, which I do think he's probably technically capable of operating at. But nobody's interested in fighting him. Yeah. The, the broadcasters aren't interested in necessarily putting him on. And so he gets shut out of competitions because of this. So when he gets opponents hurt or buzzed, he needs to show that he's, he's capable of going through the gears, putting a dent in guys like the Carolers, who we know is a tough operator, we know he's boxed at a solid European level against guys like Tyron Zeugen, like Vincent Feigen, but who, you know, was in with Caleb Plant last year. And if he can get someone like the Carolus out of here, that is a decent statement. He's got to take his time, he's got to pick his shots, he can't get reckless, but if he does get an opening, we need to see that he can really punch and really take his man out. See what he can do. Yeah. The Carolus, very durable, very capable. This is a guy who eight years ago in his prime went the distance with uh, Arthur Abraham. He's no pushover, but I tell you what, Lorraine Richards is making him look very, very ordinary. I mean, through uh, this fight so far, Giovanni De Carolis has barely managed to land a shot. This is already turning into a frustrating night for him. Okay. So stay sharp, you know, we swings. Mm -hmm. Stay sharp. But have your hands in a position you can count downstairs if you get a chance. Okay. All right, so if it's a tight exit, there, and you can go slot something in. But the minute he misses big like that, he's 35 years old, he's muscle bound. Right? Yes. Got to stick him downstairs. Uh -huh. right? That's not allowing him to get his breath back. Okay? Okay? okay. Good, good. 10 seconds, Cronus! Don't fall asleep. Don't get complacent and don't think you're doing enough. Yes. Seconds out. Round four. Yeah, that was telling from Dave Caldwell at the end there, wasn't he? He said, don't think you're doing enough. Stay on it. Don't get complacent. And he is the kind of individual who, who could get complacent because he'll find such an easy, comfortable way to win. That's clearly not what Dave wants. Dave, like Chris was saying earlier, I'm, I'm quite sure Dave yeah. wants him to impress. Oh, yeah. No question. Look, I'll tell you something, Alex. De Carolis has been made to look extremely ordinary tonight. He just can't cope with him at all at the moment. No, too slick, too quick, using a jab to great effect as well. Keeps turning De Carolis all the time. He just cannot get set to land anything of note. And on the few times we've seen him rush in, Richards just slides off, yeah. uses his great feet work and movement. And I do think it's a combination of how good Richards is and also the inactivity of the Carolis. I think he's 36, if not 35. Yeah, he's 36, I think, now. Yeah, and, and of course, at, at that kind of age, that's just where the the reflexes just start to slide a little bit. You can see gaps that you can't necessarily close, see opportunities that... As they say, the mind makes a date that the body can't keep. It just looks a little bit like that at the moment. A little bit laboured, like he can't quite get his feet into range quick enough. And you combine that with uh, uh, Lerone Richards, who's at his peak, and I think that's really accounting for the, the gap, technically, that you're seeing at the moment. And it is a gap, isn't it? He just picks some really nice shots. The hands are faster. The reflexes are sharper. The movement is quicker. He loves to dig those right hands to the body. The Carolis. Takes a deep breath after that one and continues his forlorn pursuit. And it is looking forlorn. He just can't pin him down at all, can he? Even when he does pin him there on the ropes, he still can't manage to land anything. No, can't get anything clean off. It's interesting to see how comfortable he is on the back foot as well here, Richards. 
And so De Carolis has obviously decided, right, got to force this fella back. Let's see if he can operate as a back foot boxer as well. And uh, at the moment, he certainly can. And he was uh, definitely caught by that backhand there, De Carolis. Yep. Body shot comes to in. Yeah. But that's where, that's where Colwell will want him to try and step on and, and see yes. what he's made of, go through yeah. the gears. Because he was definitely buzzed by that, De Carolis. You see the body language just change. He's hanging on now. And Latham letting him, letting him work it out as well here. I think he might call break here now, though, because they've, uh, they've cancelled each other out. And Alex, you, you know, you kind of mentioned that it's hard to instill certain attributes in a fighter. He's a very, very nice guy, Lerone Richards, uh, to, to the point where you almost say, is he a little bit too nice to be a, a oh, really? fighter? Is yeah. he missing that kind of real... I mean, you can oh, see look it Look at this, look at this. <laughs> lots of flair, lots of, lots of relaxation. He's very, very calm, he's very happy, he's very chilled. But, you know, that killer instinct in those key moments. And speaking of killer instinct, yeah. one man that is not lacking it one bit <laughs> is Joshua Boatze. Well, certainly not. But, you, know, not you look at the... The, the fighters in Great Britain have had kind of early shots against the Russians, Callum Johnson against uh, Arta Baterbiev, yeah. Anthony Ard against Sogai Koval. They both had their moments. One man that would have taken full advantage of those moments and would not have let either man off the hook is Joshua Boazzi. Whether he's technically at that level yet, we don't really know. He's probably not. But the point being, if he smells blood, oh, yeah. you, are, you are getting put away 100%, no matter whether you're Dimitri Biv or Arta Baterbiev, Vosdik, he's, he's got that finishing instinct. But can he add the technical skills to his arsenal to get to world level. Yeah, sometimes you get the feeling with Bats as well, you know, one wrong move and your brain explodes, you know, he's, oh. he's very dynamic. Oh, brutal. And, yeah, yeah, unbelievable, um, unbelievably powerful puncher as well. And his intentions, he, he looks like his intentions are to, to, to do damage, you Absolutely, know. Absolutely, yeah. Not to outbox someone and outthink them, but... As he says, he says, my aim is to get, to get you before you get me. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Lerone Richards is clearly just going to outbox you and bamboozle you. And uh, if the finish is there, great. But uh, he's just comfortable at the moment. He is completely bossing this fight. And De Carolis, De Carolis is starting to run out of ideas here as early as the fifth round. I'd like to see Richards start to stick that left hand down to the body. Just uh, slowly over time, maybe just set the heads up because the Carolis's arms and guard are quite high and tight and it's making it hard for Richards to find opportunities and gaps through the middle upstairs. He's found a few right hands to the midsection already, yeah. Richards. They've been there for him. Yeah. He's been sticking his jab down at the body quite regularly as well. Yeah. It's better like that. There you go, right on cue, Chris. You asked for it, you got it. You do get a feeling from Richards as well that as he as he progresses and he keeps working with Dave and he, he, he goes through bouts like this, that he's, he is going to improve and he is going to learn a lot more about himself and his style and how, and how effective and athletic he actually is. He's, uh, you can clearly tell he's a great athlete. He starts putting all that to, to good use. Start to understand what what shots work well for him, and what positions suit him to be in. I think he's going to get better and better. I tell you, he's making uh, the Carolis miss with that right hand the way Gamalia Fire was missing with the left hooks as well. He just can't find him at all, can he, at the moment? He's a mark of Richards and his elusiveness that when he does get pinned up on the ropes, you think, hello, he's in trouble here, he's got nowhere to go, and then suddenly, boom, he's slipped away. Yeah, he's got brilliant, natural, kind of defective, defensive instincts and reflexes. Beautiful punch pick into the body there. Happy to just stand in range there, slip and roll. Yeah, lovely. Didn't need to exert loads of energy. Just got the hips rolling. Yeah. Yeah, Carol is trying to just close it up now. And again. Another swing and a miss. Yep, digging the body well now as well, Richards. Oh, that wasn't so good. That was the Andrade uppercut that he was trying, wasn't it? It, just, it was. <laughs> your body shot you know, there, yeah. Somewhere Demetrius Andrade heard that, Alex Arthur, and he said, you are. I'll land it cleaner than that, mate. <laughs> now, that was nice. It's again that right hand to the body. It's a shot that's there for him. As Chris said, he said he wanted to see it. Well, he's seeing it now, and De Carolis is feeling it. Yeah, it's the perfect time to just start cranking things up. Well, there is. 
Nigel Hunter and Joshua Boats. He said really they've been working on rebuilding the, the fundamentals and, and the basics. I mean, the fundamentals didn't look bad at all, but I think the head movement, sometimes the creation of angles. Uh, again, we talked about Gamal Yafai. I think Joshua Boatsy over reliant sometimes on that power, and he's got a very, very good chin too. Spars with a lot of much heavier guys than, than himself. So he knows where his capabilities lie, but an over reliance on those has, has sometimes left him just a little bit technically exposed. Brian Ford had a little bit more success than perhaps he should have as did Marco Chalic and although really those guys were never particularly in charge of, of the contest and he got them out of there I just wonder what Virgil Hunter will be able to do with him Round six Round six then it's been uh, plain sailing so far for the man with the AFC Wimbledon soccer Scarf on the back of his trunks. The crowd South London at Lerone Richards now based out of Rotherham in Yorkshire and that's a level of his commitment that he's prepared to uproot and leave the comforts of home to work in the Coldwell gym. And uh, Giovanni Di Carolis at the moment is also out of his comfort zone. A long way out of his comfort zone because he's just being outboxed here. Well, they can move virtually anybody wants to move at this point in time. Bringing the backhand into play here as well. Look at this, Di Carolis. Thinking, well, what do I do here? And by the time he thought about it, Richards was gone and coming back at him with another little raid. It's really slick stuff, this, from Lerone Richards. There's that right to the body again, and there's De Carroll is trying to respond. Lovely lateral movement there as well. You just can't pin this man down at all. The one thing you can say is that Richards is now starting to go through the gears. There's definitely a higher output from him, and he's starting to sit down on the shots too. He's found a little level of fluidity as well. He's in a, in a real nice kind of like rhythm now, Chris, as well. Yeah, a groove, uh, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Hopefully we'll start to see him open up a little bit more and maybe look a little bit more aggressive to, to, to go well with these other good attributes that he's shown right now. We should see if he stops him. I mean, Tyrone Zoiger did stop him, but admittedly with a few seconds left, and Maxim Bursak got rid of him in eight. That's the only time he's been stopped really early. The Carolis and those indeed are his only two stoppages, and uh, Bursak was a banger. But at the moment, Richards just seems to be softening him up very effectively. Well, like we said there, Lil Nick, he's, he's, very, he's always very, very fit, he's very strong, he's always in great shape, so he's not the easiest guy in the world to get out of there. No, he's not. He's also not really throwing much either, so he's pretty tight guard, which is limiting yeah. the opportunities for Richards every time he lets his hands go. You almost like to see him just try and feint and just bait something out of the Carolis and, and throw, with his, throw with a bit of venom at the same time, catch yeah. him when the guard is down. Oh, nice sneaky little backhand just popped through there as well. But giving he, the Carol is something else to think about. Well, he's, he's clearly boxing to instructions as well, Nick, here. You know, we've, we've heard Dave in between the rounds asking Richards to do the things that he's doing now. So you can't really ask for much more. This right hook to the body is quite a weapon for uh, Lerone Richards, one of many. Carol is can't block it at all, and you can see him reddening up there, and that big swing with the left hook rather sums up Giovanni Di Carolis's night so far. Coming up empty. It is very, very easy this so far for Lerone Richards. Where all he thinks is, if I just land one shot, maybe, maybe. Right? This is where you have to take that one shot hole away from him. Right? This is the difference between just being champion and starting to get yourself up there. Right? Don't load. Start going through gears. Okay. Right? Up and down, up and down. There's no need to use back off in now. Hold that thing in ring. Stop shooting the jab. Stop taking the steps. Take a okay. step and firing off the steps. Okay. Right? When he gets on the inside, stay compact. Chin on the chest. Shoulder, shoulder. Old school. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. Ten seconds, Corners. Yeah. Very good. Seconds out. Round seven. So we go into the second half of this battle for the uh, vacant European super middleweight title. Lerone Richards, originally from South London, very much 
in control against the, the veteran Italian Giovanni De Carolis, who is looking every bit his 36 years at the moment. Uh, straight back on it again there, Richards. I will say, Nick, seeing De Carolis in the uh, in the bubble this week, a really nice team, but I did look at him at, at breakfast one morning, he wasn't eating very much, this was before the weigh-in, and I did think he just looked a little bit dry, and of course, in, in very, good, very, very good condition, carrying a fair bit of muscle too, but of course hasn't made weight for a couple of years as well, and just wondering whether he's starting to take its toll on him making this weight, even though it's not an enormous super middleweight, and, and of course one of the manifestations of that is that you struggle to go through the gears yourself and put anything together, so combination of inactivity, rust, and, and actually maybe just being a little bit depleted, more so than he'd like to, he's, uh, he's just struggling to cope with what Richards has, has got to offer at this stage. Yeah. Also, when it's becoming difficult to make weight, it's also seems to be a lot harder when you're up against the mover. It's an absolute nightmare. You, can, <laughs> you just want them to stand there with you. <laughs> but if they keep moving all the time, it, it makes it tremendously difficult. And Richards is certainly a mover. Sure is. And a the right hand there, De Carolis. Very, very slick. And I'll tell you what, I think you can find meaningful shots that De Carolis has landed through this fight. You can count on the fingers of one hand. Yep. Fit and outfit as well. For Richards, he's been he's never stayed still. He is like a bee or a wasp. He's been buzzing around that ring the whole night. Never stopped for a second. Picking some good shots now yeah. as well. De Carolis soaking it all up. Yeah. He's looking for different ranges and and for, for different punch varieties now as well, Richards. He's not really going through the basic kind of things that Dave was asking him to do earlier as well now. He's uh, he's looking to explore a little bit with some of these shots. You've got to show different things at different yeah, points do, in the contest. Yeah, you do, yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, like sitting here watching him like this, I'd love to see him put some combinations together. He's clearly got brilliant speed, lovely fluidity. You know, see him throw four, five, six punch combinations would be something brought yeah, a great lovely. shot there. Yeah. He's sitting down on these now a little bit as well, Chris, isn't he? He's starting to, like, sit down on them a little bit more. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was always in the plan. Colbo will be happy with what he's seen so far. Only thing missing at this point is, uh, is the stoppage. It doesn't look anything like happening at the moment. I've only got to take one shot that to Carolis maybe catches clean, but he's not looked in any major trouble, has he? Just looked completely, completely outboxed and, and befuddled to this stage. He hasn't yeah. won any moment of any round to this point, and we're through seven. And he, he was showcasing himself there, Richards. He picked an uppercut, he had the double jab going, and thus far, I mean, Alex, you know, it, it's hard to say where Giovanni, so Giovanni has won a minute of any round, as, as Chris said. No, he's definitely not, no, without a doubt, no, he's not won a minute of the, any, any of the rounds so far anyway. He's not actually had that much success at all. But how many times has he been made to miss as well? Yeah, and he's, you know, he's uh, making the classic mistake, of, you know, throwing a punch where Richards is at that point in time, but <laughs> by the time by the time the punch gets there, Richards is gone. You, yeah. know, you need to try and attack someone like Richards, send them up with a punch and then punch where they're going. Exactly. You know? or, or, I guess at the very least, try and punch with them because yes. you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're waiting for yeah. their punch to land and, and then expect that you can fire back and he'll still be in the same place. The there one thing go. that Richards does do is take his head off centre and, and slip and slide very well after he's landed. So His feet go with him as well, yeah. so it makes him even trickier, Chris. Very, very tricky. Well, De Carlos is going to start eating jabs as well. It's going to be a really long, long night for him. Well, it's round eight. It's, uh, it's almost desperation time for the veteran Italian here. Just cannot deal with the skill set of his opponent. Uh, you know, off the back of that last round as well, you'd, you'd like to see Lerone Richards, as you say, go through the gears here, and maybe he can force the stoppage. I think he's boxing to destruction as well, though. Yes. There's no question about that. 
so frustrating for him, isn't it, as that right hand gets through to the body again. And the Carolis decides it's time to open up, and again, he's still swinging and not really finding anything. He's a big target, Lerone Richards, but De Carolis just can't catch him clean. Yeah, the uppercut back in there as well. Now, on this performance, guys, you have to look ahead and say who would he beat on those kind of fringes of world level. And it's going to be a stylistic thing. But you have to say, listen, somebody like David Lemieux would be absolutely tailor-made for him because yeah. he does load up a bit on his shots. He hasn't got the quickest feet. He's, he's got a few miles on the clock. The kind of guy that Richards may not put a dent in himself, but he, he would absolutely box rings around yeah, someone like David Lemieux. Yeah. It, could, it could be a complete shutout. Yeah. But, but would you kind of say he's, he's ready for that world level? The guys like Caleb Plant and Benavides and Callan Smith and, of course, Canelo Alvarez. No, of course, of course he isn't. So it, it's, it's not going to be an easy guy to, to move because opponents with real ambitions of making it to world level themselves are just not going to want to fight somebody like him. I think this is the tricky part of his career, isn't it? Because he's, he's gone beyond the domestic level. He, he's clearly a very, very high European level. But, yeah, where do you take him next? That's going to be the really interesting question. Yeah, very slick. Oh, he, he's, that's for sure. I tell you, there's a there's a big, big upside to him. You'd like to see the highlight reel finish from him just to complete the set here, but at the moment he's just boxing perfectly. Will Joshua Boetsi box perfectly here in the tutelage of Virgil Hunter? He is the star attraction tonight against the Frenchman Daniel Dos Santos, two unbeaten fighters. And one very much an unknown quantity. There's not much footage of Dos Santos around at all. No, you're right, Nick, there isn't. I, I think you probably take more from watching him shape up at the Open Workout this week than in, in any of the, the very sparse clips that are available in kind of grainy footage online. It looks like he's a relatively slick mover. He's boxing southpaw for most of the uh, Open Workout, which again was, was news to us, so whether he's a switcher or a straight southpaw. But as you say, the, the issue he's going to have is that he has never been in with anyone, and there's no doubt he hasn't sparred with anyone anything like the level of, no. of Joshua Boazzi. So he, he's, unless we've got some kind of uh, incredible chin that we don't know about, he, he could be in, in very, very deep water very early on here tonight. But, uh, well, the unknown quantity is always the, the biggest danger in boxing. Yeah. James Tennyson found that out with uh, Giovanni Strafon, Josh Warrington with Maurizio Lara. You just cannot, in this climate, write anybody off after what's happened in the last six months. It would be pure naivety. Yeah, it's just as well Joshua Boazzi isn't up against an unknown Mexican tonight just to complete the set. Yeah, absolutely. Here, the, uh, the very known quantity of Giovanni Di Carolis is getting a bit of a lesson. I love that right hook to the, to the body that he just lands so effortlessly there, but uh, yeah, he's well conditioned Di Carolis because he's taken an awful lot of those tonight. But there's just, there's just no ambition at all from, from De Carolis, whether that's because he's felt the power early and he's just decided to tuck up and try and see it out and he's come to kind of just make a few quid. I, I don't know, but the issue is that Richard almost is, is kind of experiencing what he would have at the early stages of his career against some of these journeymen who just come in, tuck up, take the shots on the gloves. He's picking all of the shots that he can, but it's harder and harder, and harder to really pry stuff out of, of De Carolis, and where he's not letting his hands go, that is limiting the opportunities that Richard has got to land clean. As you see there, putting plenty of shots together, but that guard is high and it's tight, the elbows are tucked down, not making life easy for the South London man at all, really. Well, he's always been able to look, I mean, we said this right at the start of the fight, didn't we? he's always been able to look after himself, Giovanni De Carolis. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a very capable 
guy. He's a ring general. He knows how to maximise the best of his opportunities and to take care of himself. What he hasn't had here is any chance of maximising the opportunities. There's been so few of them. It's always been a thing of any. Yeah, I mean, there's always been a bit of late drama. The uh, the Feigenbutz and the Zoiga fights fought both of them twice. He, you know, there was always that kind of 12th round late drama either way. So he, he can be vulnerable late on in the fight. He can also be dangerous late on in the fight as well. He just looks well overmatched here. Yeah, it's hard to stop an opponent you can't hit. But at the moment, Giovanni Di Carolis just cannot make any kind of meaningful contact with Lerone Richards. Not at all. And he's had nine rounds to try and find something, and there's just nothing there for him. Through nine rounds for me, Richards pitching a shutout. Yeah, but it's quite surprising as well, someone so experienced is uh, continually doing the same thing over and over again with no success at all. Loading up on single right hands, you know, and you know he's, he's, he's got nowhere near Richards, but he continues to do the same thing over and over again. Another classic example, like uh, Chris said earlier, that it, it could, that could be a sign of age and make him wait. Simple as that, yeah. Just can't pull the trigger, can't get the combinations off, you know. Yeah, you always hear that, don't you, from, from fighters sort of mid 30s and beyond when they have a subpar performance. Uh, I spoke to Carl Frampton after that, Jamal Jam Herring performance a few weeks ago, he said exactly the same thing. He said, I could see things, just couldn't pull the trigger. Whatever that syndrome is, something goes, and I think we're seeing it in Giovanni De Carolis here tonight. Well, look at the body language. Well, just look at that. I think they may pull him at some point, Nick, you know. 10 seconds! Well, he hasn't won a round. And I don't think he's going to either. No. Round 10. Lerone Richards calls himself Sniper the Boss. Boy, he's bossed this one. Well, as you said, he's, uh, he's seen the good and the bad of late drama Giovanni De Carolis. Is there going to be late drama in this one? You can just hear Dave Coldwell there. This has just been like an extended yeah. sparring session for, for Lerone Richards tonight. Chance to try out some stuff. Feel what he can do. And uh, less and less and less coming from uh, Giovanni De Carolis now. Look at that, he just moved forward there and couldn't find a punch. Hasn't thrown a punch in this round yet. Uh, there, he finally landed one. Lovely, lovely head movement there. Takes a little right hand, but... Nothing at any notes. He's got full control here at everything he's doing. Everything that's happening in this boat, he's got full control of it. His re reflexes are razor sharp, aren't they? Again, just draws him in, makes him miss. Nice sharp, fast hands, good accuracy again. And again, swinging and missing here, the Italian. The tenth round following the pattern of the previous nine. <laughs> there he goes, gone. Just gone. I mean, he just must be so frustrating for De Carolis, this. Yeah, no, this is this is just pick, picking some shots now. This is just padding out the highlight reel. This. Oh. <laughs> right, some fun as well. Yeah. But that's what you need to see from him. You need to see a little bit of flair, a little bit yeah. of substance to to the style. Because sometimes it becomes almost a bit hypnotic. He gets in a rhythm, and it's so easy for him. But it's not necessarily always exciting to watch. Whereas that little passage there, 30 to 40 seconds, where he's hands down, slipping and sliding, yeah. making it interesting for people to watch at home. That's what you want to see. Good job as well. <laughs> Well, he can put them together as well when he wants. Yeah. Gonna say, yeah. He can, he certainly can. Yeah. I can't say he hasn't, he hasn't yeah. tried to. He speaks to Dave Colwell, he said, listen, he, he does really punch. So I'm not quite sure what doesn't translate in the in the fight, whether he'll have more success as the level of opposition goes up and guys start, guys kind of 
stop just tucking up yeah. into their shell so much. Yeah. I don't know is the is the real answer because he hasn't done anything wrong here. In full control. And yet there's still a butt there, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There's still a butt. He's got to stop him. You hear Dave Caldwell say there, you've got to stop him. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm good. It's good. Don't load on single shots. A single shot's not going to put him away. No. Plus that, that's all But then you've got to bring your feet in so you've got the weight of the backhand behind it as well. You understand? Yeah. When you get, just get on inside it. When you bolt, when you just jump on the back of the inside. Uh-huh. It's there. Just keep jumping, 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 lifting it up. Just stay in the road, back of the inside. I don't want to see that. Ten seconds, Corners! Well, they want the stoppage, that's for sure. Dave Colwell has sent them out saying, go and do it. Well, can he find it? Lerone Richards has had it all his own way through the first 10 rounds of this fight. Can he put the uh, exclamation mark on the end of it? I think, ironically, this is probably DeCarolis' best chance of getting anything out of the, uh, of the fight if Richards is going to really let his hands go and try and set his feet a bit more because he, he will be there to be found in ways he just hasn't yeah. been in the previous 10 rounds. But that is his only hope, really, the Italian. He is going to be completely shut out of this otherwise. Well, he's showing more and more reluctance to even throw DeCarolis. <laughs> Yeah. Staying out of range himself there. Now, will Richards decide to open up? Nice. Will it create an opening? You look good on the front foot there, Stop yeah. Boxing. Boxing. No, on the low side. Yep. It is the question, though, isn't it? Because he's hit Giovanni De Carolis with a lot of shots. Even if it's not one punch concussive knockout stuff, there's been a, a body of shots that have uh, worn down an opponent you would think at this level, and yet De Carolis is still there, still standing, even though Richards is just picking him off pretty much as he wants. As you said earlier, guys, at the highest level, does he have the dig that can really discourage the big beasts in this division. I think I think the answer probably actually is well, it's certainly not the, the biggest beast in the division because we know the number one man is. But I mean, he's obviously got enough dig because the Carolus has had to go tight guard for the vast majority of the contest, and he wouldn't do that if he wasn't respectful of the power. And listen, Dave Colwell has had Tony Belly all the pads for years, and he said Richards can really, really bang. He, he knows his fighters. He knows if a guy yeah. can punch or not. You can hear the, the shots. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with his power. It's it's just. Like you say, is there, is there quite enough there to get guys to look at him and think, yeah, I can beat this guy, yeah. especially if they've got world title ambitions of their own, because if they have, he's just going to be the, the sort of fighter that, unless the money's right, that they're not going to take. Yeah. yeah. If, they, if they fall into his rhythm as well, they're, they're yes. in for a very, very long night. Absolutely. Because he can make you miss and he can make you pay so very well. His movement is fa absolutely fantastic. Well, look there, he sat on those there, lads. You see that, he sat on his shots there. You can see he gets a bit of respect when he sits down on his shots. Yeah. We really don't know what his chin's like in this fight because Tim Carolis just hasn't been able to find it. No. You know, even some of the top guys will find this guy hard to nail clean. They will, absolutely. He's got great judgment of distance as well. He just knows where to be and when. Yep. Very, very uh, intelligent. Yes, sir. Hold on. got one more round. Right. Yes, sir. What are you doing? You're not inside. Yeah. Drop it. You're waiting. Good for you. Cheers, Thank you. You're waiting. Oh, wait. Just fire off the balance. Drop, drop. Fire. And then when you fire, you've got to fire straight in. You're going to slide. Is this the last one? Yeah. Last round. Easy work. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking, yeah, you know, he's hardly breathing, really. Listen. He's listen. breezed through 11 rounds here. Come on, he's like a champion. Yes, sir. Oh. Which means that we are nearly ready to see Joshua Boazzi. Virgil Hunter's taking a bit of time with that wrapping, isn't he? Come on, Virgil. 
Yeah, hard to tell whether, the, uh, whether that footage is in slow motion or whether he's just really uh, labouring the point. But one thing to one thing for sure, Joshua Boatsy won't be labouring at all. He usually comes out of the, the traps. It will be an exciting main event for however long it lasts. Yes, yeah, always interesting when you've got an unknown quantity. Every, I think everybody is thinking, oh, well, it's going to be an easy night for Boatsy. But of course, Dos Santos has his own agenda. Everybody thought it was going to be an easy night for Josh Warrington. Everybody thought it was going to be an easy night for James Tennyson. It's certainly been an easy night for Lerone Richards, that's for sure. Ridiculously easy. Oh, you, you know how one-sided it's been, Alex Arthur. I haven't even asked you how you're scoring it. I'll, I'll be gobsmacked, uh, Alex. Uh, I think you'd agree with me if, if any of the judges have even given a single round no, to the camera. No, they He's not one around. There's no way. He's not one a minute around. There's no. But it's the next phase for Lerone Richards. Where does he go next? Does he consolidate at this level? Will they start throwing some minor WBC, WBA type belts at him? Get him, get him a couple of years of seasoning before pitching him in at the highest level. Maybe Canelo's moved up to light heavyweight then, and uh, that will open everything up for him. He's certainly got a skill set that is going to cause anyone a problem, that's for sure. And I don't think we can say, you know, he has been guilty of admiring his own work in the past. He hasn't tonight. He's stuck to it. He's stuck to the game plan. He's stayed busy. He's bossed it. De Carolis is tough, we know that. And he's shown it again tonight. Well, there's, there's not a lot you can criticise about Lerone Richards on this performance. It's an absolutely dominant performance so for a major belt. So good. Good shot. Yes, uh, the dictionary definition of uh, pitching a shutout, as uh, our friend stateside will tell you and for a European title should, should never never be easy but this is uh, about as comfortable I think as you'll ever see at uh, this kind of level and to Carolis yes he may be past his best he's 36 he is no mug he's been made to look very very ordinary yeah. tonight and I have to be I have to be completely honest based on looking at Vincent Feigenberg's performance against Caleb Plant uh, and even Tyron Zoyga of course was beaten by Rocket Field. I think he beats both of those very very comfortably uh, and both of those guys are still kind of in and yeah. around their prime yeah. too. I think he absolutely bosses those two. The well, last few seconds of this one. Masterclass stuff from Lerone Richards. A little flash of defiance right at the end there from Giovanni Di Carolis. But this one is over. And you don't need the judges to know who's won this one. Too good. Too good. It's a whitewash. Total whitewash. Yeah. And there's no way a judge could have gave the Carolus one round there. There is just no well, way. Well, that'll be the only talking point if somebody has. Oh, there's just this no is, way. Come yeah, on. There's nothing there. It's it's been a total breeze yeah. for Lerone Richards this fight. Yeah, if, if all three cars don't say 120 <laughs> by Lerone Richards, it, it, you know, not that it'll be anything, it shouldn't be a talking point, but at the same time, you know, it, it's unfortunately the theme in boxing. <laughs> You've seen that yes. any other than 12 nil to to Lorraine Richards, then just what on earth are you watching? So let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> well, sometimes a judge will throw a bone to a, a game trier. You know, yeah, maybe. They might have given him one of the later rounds, maybe. But I don't know why you should. But you shouldn't, no. I don't know why you should. No. You know, you don't get points for, for trying. You, uh, you get points for winning in sport. Unfortunately, boxing seems to uh, always throw up the... The exceptions, well, they're not the exceptions, unfortunately. They're almost uh, more common than uh, than not these days. Speaking to uh, Tom Gray from the, the Ring magazine, who's, be, who's doing a, a new section of the, the magazine called uh, Mark Your Card, which is going to be holding specific judges to account if they score fights that are clearly well, well, uh, well wider the mark. And I think at some point accountability in boxing is, if not done by a centralised governing body, which we know it, it isn't governed by that has to be held to account by the prominent individuals and prominent institutions within the sport the ring magazine is one of them yeah. and well done to them although that's always tough because it is a subjective business as well there is subjective there shouldn't be in this one but sometimes there is it's what you like 
Well, it shouldn't be what you like. There are specific criteria by which boxing is scored and, and all judges should really be on the same page in certain, you know, under all circumstances. Well, I, hear what you, I hear what you're saying, Nick, but just maybe comes into question whether the scoring system itself is a little bit outdated. Mm. Is a 10-9 scoring system the best way to reflect so much nuance within each individual round? I'm not necessarily sure it is, but anyway, it's a conversation for another time. There is Lorraine Richards inevitably about to get his hand raised. David Diamante is standing by to deliver the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here in Manchester, England, we go to the judges' score totals. Ian John Lewis and Ansi Pereyoki both scored about 120 to 108. Francisco Ayosa Rosa scores about 119 to 109. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new European super middleweight champion, Laron. Yeah. Sniper the Two boss. shutouts. Yeah. A little bit of charity from the Spanish judge. Sack that judge. <laughs> Let's get him out of there. How dare he give him a round? <laughs> hey, we're we not going to argue. We knew, we knew, didn't we? But, yeah, uh, well, you know, that was a bit of charity. I mean, it was, it was so one-sided, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah. Just wonderful from Lerone Richards. It's a drama-free win, though. You have to say that, but he won't mind about that. Look at that. Well, he's uh, going the conventional route, isn't he? He won the Commonwealth title against Tommy Langford. He